And we're on the red carpet with certified lifestyle and self-care coach. She's also the author of Awaken to Your Inner Authentic Beauty, the lovely, the gorgeous Miss Mitzi Reed. Hey, Mitzi, thank you so much for being here. Well, thank you, Maria, for having me. It's exciting to be here. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of buzz going on. Yeah. So you wrote this great book. First of all, tell me, what is this book about? Well, Maria, I wanted this book to take women on an inward journey so that they can embrace their authentic inner beauty, so that they can feel confident, successful, sexy, <laughs> and beautiful just the way they are. And I do this through sharing my own story and sharing techniques and tips that have helped me to overcome my own negative body image so that it may help you as well. Well, you just alluded to you know why you wrote this book, and that's what I really want to ask you is, looks like your own story um, has, has been the inspiration for this book. So tell me about that. Yes, for years I tr struggled with my own negative body image and I didn't feel good about myself. I never wanted to go to places or do anything because I didn't feel good about myself or my body. And I was on numerous diets and I was trying to fit into the image of that perfect woman. I had talked to numerous women and the majority of women that I talked to had negative body image issues. And the techniques that I learned through my book, I wanted to share with other women because in reality, we're all beautiful just the way that we are. So what was the process of writing this book? How long did it take? Well, it actually because of my negative body image issues that I've had since basically I was a little girl, it's actually been a process my whole life. But to actually sit down and write the book, it took me about probably three to four months to really get it down. That's not very long. No. Three to four months and it's now you know published. That's fantastic. What has been the feedback from people who have seen the book? Oh, I've gotten great feedback from people. You know, they sit there and say it's life-changing. It's really helped them to feel good about themselves, where they feel confident and they can go out to a party or to a networking event and feel great about themselves. So d the different techniques that I have given, you know, I really go inward. I don't just go over the surface. I really get in touch with what's going on on the inside of them so that we can really bring that out in them. Okay, so I want to talk to you about being um, a self-care coach. I think, you know, especially women, we feel very guilty when we're pampering ourselves, and especially when you have children, because you're thinking, uh, I've got to allocate so much time, and I'm, you know, I'm going to go get my hair and nails and, you know, whatever, go to the spa. So tell me the importance of self-care and what that actually means. Well, I. I really emphasize that self-care is a necessity, not a luxury. So I think if you kind of get into that mindset that we all need to take care of ourselves, whether it's the nails, whether it's going out for a walk, you know, whether it's eating healthy food, it's taking care of ourselves, and that is a necessity. Why, Why is that so important? Well, it helps with your self-esteem, for one, and also when you're taking care of yourself, you're taking care of your health, your mental, spiritual, and physical health, which will help you, but also will help anyone that you're around, your friends, your family, because just like on an airplane, they always say to put the mask on yourself first before you you know, put the mask on someone else. Well, it's the same here. If you can't take care of yourself, you're no shift to take care of anyone else. So I want to talk to you a little bit about the the mental fitness of it all and getting ready, um, you know, whether it's a business meeting or whether it's just an outing or something like that. You had said to me very sweetly that you like to look nice for your husband. You like to do you know, the extra things, and, and I think that's important. So tell me about like getting mentally fit and, and how how to go about that. Well, what I do in the mornings is that I always go through my affirmations. And a lot of people think, you know, that's just, you know, bogus and it doesn't help because you're always having that negative stuff going in your mind. But if you keep repeating it and you actually look at yourself in the mirror, and my secret is I actually look at my left eye in the mirror. It helps, you know, to help you process that. So I always do that. And I have affirmations throughout my my home. Also, the other thing that I do, like you were mentioning, as far as I do like to look good for my husband, I like to look and feel good for myself as well. So even if I'm staying home during the day, I actually dress up, you know, and it makes me feel good. And then, you know, I feel good when my husband comes home and I can treat him as well. So that's what I do. Okay, and just so that you all know, this is true. So we had just a quick little meeting to, to chat. Uh, we met up at a grocery store. 
I come in in a ball cap and sweatpants. <laughs> she comes in like this fabulous black wrap looking like, you know, a movie star just to have like a quick little you know, cup of coffee. So, but she said to me, you did, you said to me that I dress up for myself. And yes. I think that is so cool. Yes. Yes, I don't dress to impress anyone. I dress to impress myself. It makes me feel good. And when I feel good on the outside, I'm going to feel good on the inside and vice versa. So, so you know, I'm super passionate about this, uh, this topic because I feel like we're in a very shallow industry, especially, you know, with the media and whatnot. So one of the things I have a hard thing to, to deal with is, you know, when I'm interviewing say an A-list celebrity, it's so easy to compare yourself. So what do you do about comparison? And we kind of talked about this off camera where you go on somebody's Facebook and you're like, God, everybody's life is so perfect. Why is mine not that way? So I want to talk to you about comparison. How do we get away from that? Well, I think the best way to do it, and, and I know it's hard and it's just a simple thing, is stop comparing. Just stop. You know, we are all beautiful in our own way. We all have assets. Yes, so, you know, we have weaknesses too, but don't, you know, don't concentrate on the weaknesses. Concentrate on your strengths and what, um, and all the different um, great things that you have, maybe as far as your features, enhance those features. Mm. So that's basically, I mean, it's just simple. Just stop comparing. Okay, so let's go um, to a different angle, um, getting judged. I think we're all afraid of getting judged. I think that's what the fear is, why we don't want to step out. And, you know, we talked about comparison, but we're also afraid of, you know, how we sound, how we look, who we're hanging out with, what are we driving, you know, how big our house is. So talk to me about that. How do we just push that aside and, and not worry about what other people say. And quite honestly, I'm fearful of that. You know, what are people going to say about this interview or, or whatnot? Well, you know, I think we all go through that, whether, you know, what people are going to think about us or anything else. But you know what? At the end of the day, it's how we feel about ourselves, you know, how we treat ourselves and how we look to ourselves. Like I said, I, I dress up, you know, around the house. It's because I feel good. So I think instead of you know, looking outside and, and trying to compare ourselves, we really need to get in touch with, you know, how we look. And like I said before, enhancing the features that we already have. Like you have beautiful eyes. I mean, enhance the eyes, you know, and, and not focus so much on the other things. And, you know, I no longer go out where, or I no longer actually just stay home because I don't feel good about myself. You know, I'll, I'll put on some makeup, I'll make myself feel a little good. And once I get out, then I'm like, wow, I'm really having a great time. And you forget about what you look like. You forget about what other people look like. And you really just start getting into yourself. So I want you to talk to that person right now who's having that negative self-talk moment in this moment. What can they do to change, to change that and turn that around? Well, Maria, that's a really great question. I think probably the best tip that I can give you today to awaken and embrace your own inner beauty is that when you start feeling bad about yourself, just stop, take a breath, and start thinking about all the great things that are happening in your life. You know, and like today, you know, I what I did when you asked me to, to interview, I'm thinking, you know, is my hair okay? You know, am I okay? And I was starting to, you know, think of all the negative body image issues that I had in the past. But this is great. This is exciting to be here. And I didn't want to miss that opportunity because I had maybe a hair out of place. So I went with it and I feel great. And here I am. Well, you know, that's a really good point. And what I like what you said about, hey, you got to focus on what's right in your life because it's really easy when something wrong is going on, you can easily say, oh, I don't like my hips. I don't like my, you know, stomach. Blah, 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 all the way. But when you say what's right, it's just, it's a different focus and you can go into the world in a better way. So thank you so much for being here. Uh, for people who want to get more information about your book, where should they go? Um, it would be awakentoyourinnerauthenticbeauty.com. Thank you so much, Bitsy. And you know I'm passionate about this subject, and I know so many women are. So thank you for doing what you do. Well, thank you.